Do you have any question in this last uh, example? Now, one thing I need to tell you is that because in this chapter uh, and in the one before, I have not worked in details the examples nor the exercise questions, which only means that the type of problems or numerical problems you will see in Session 2 exams, they will not be very tricky. Yeah. So, for example, if I want to um, show you on a blank page what kind of uh, understanding I expect, so you will either have a verbal description, a verbal description, and this is also in CLO or a, a schematic description, some figure, semester description. Some quantities will be given, so like P1, P1, and so on. And uh, maybe at different states, P2, T2, so on. And all you need to do is to list all these properties, knowns, unknowns, uh, and for unknown, you just need to build some strategy. And the strategy will be, you will have, you have that table of um, formulas, all the formulas uh, are given. So for example, this formula, um, m dot equals a velocity area divided by specific volume. This is one type of formula, similarly energy balance, yeah? Uh, that d over dt of energy of a control volume is q dot cv then w dot cv and so on so all these formulas are given so you you only need to make sure that okay this question has some knowns some unknowns which of these formulas can help me get to the unknown in some cases it would be just one formula, but in some cases, you have to build a cascade of formulas. Okay, first I apply this formula, then I apply this formula, and the result of that will be used in the next formula, and so on. I think you have been doing this throughout, I mean, engineering so far and intermediate in the school. So I don't think there is any point um, unless I give some very tricky questions. So I, I don't see any point of uh, repeating those questions over and over. I did try it before sessional one uh, because I wanted to make sure that you know the right procedure. So, for example, I stress on units, um, and now you are very clear uh, of what I expect from you when you are writing your solutions. Even these, uh, this second assignment was like that. So, okay. So did you, um, can, can somebody, actually I have not started taking the assignment. So did you make sure, each one of you, that the, the your solution is consistent um, as far as units are concerned? Or you are still not sure? Hmm? Any comments on that question? Okay, no comment. So the next topic we have is throttling device. Okay, before throttling device, maybe I would like to ask you something. Um, and that is if we go back to this uh, nozzle. Or was this compressor and... No, not compressor. Diffusers and nozzle. Yeah, diffuser and nozzle. So if I look at this, now here it's written nozzle. Yeah. So when it's written, then it's very obvious that okay, you expect this kind of pressure. Velocity increases from inlet to exit, and the pressure decreases. 
But what if uh, this name is missing from some question and you just see a description either graphical or text which suggests that okay the area here and the area here they are different or maybe they are the same you never know. But how do you know um, that the model of a nozzle fits here? So let me give you an example. Um, here, what if I have some description in a question where I have similar picture, yeah, diameters, inlet, exit, and let's say midway I have some um, heating or cooling. Will this remain a nozzle? Tell me. I want to hear this answer from, from you. Will this be a nozzle or not? Yes or no? Hmm? Anyone? Or instead of heating, I can even imagine some, uh, let's say there is work done. Yeah, there is some, some, some mechanism of transferring work to this. Okay, work transfer mechanism to this. Yeah, there is some pedal and so on. Let's say there is a, there is a pedal inside. Yeah. So, so will this be a nozzle after that by introducing heating or work transfer? If your answer is yes, then you associate this word nozzle to the physical structure. Yeah? So simply because the inlet area is larger than the exit area, this does not make it a nozzle. It's, it's only the physical part of it. Nozzle, the name nozzle actually carries the assumption that nothing else is going on here. Yeah? It's a passive device. Do you remember passive devices from electrical engineering? What is a passive device? Anyone? Hmm? Passive device? Can you it either dissipates power or stores it, doesn't generate. It doesn't generate, okay. So that means that there is no, there is no um, mechanism of, uh, there is no power supply midway. Yeah? Yes. So the power, the power only comes from the input signal. That's the point. So here, what we're actually doing is that we, we define nozzle and diffuser as passive devices. Nothing else is, there is no energy, yeah? No heat transfer, no work transfer midway. Because if you do that, then you lose this simple picture. Okay. So then it will be um, something else. So that's that's something you need to keep in mind. Mm, turbines. Okay. One more thing which I need to ask you about. Uh, let's say this compressors. Yeah, and pumps. So now if I, let's say, if I start with pump, yeah. I have a body of liquid. Liquid. And in pump, you know, I just provide work. Yeah, so there is work transfer from the surrounding to the system. And as a result, the, what, what, what increases here? Enthalpy, yeah. And enthalpy is internal energy plus PV. So which means that pressure will also increase. Yeah. And internal energy could also increase. So both pressure and internal energy could increase. Now, usually when you have work transfer, I just want to make sure that you understand one important point here. Um, 
and this is also I'm saying this for liquid because in liquid typically we will not change if, if you have this assumption of incompressible liquids so an incompressible liquid we will not change so only P and U will change yeah because H is going to change so pressure and internal energy uh, gases are different because in compressor gas. so for gas small v could also change yeah and that's why we call it compressor small v actually uh, will decrease if work is done by the surrounding on the system so that is that is obvious we know if you are uh, compressing the gas like in tng you know that okay you are uh, you are, you are squeezing more molecules into a smaller space so you can understand why the pressure goes up the pressure has to go up and the temperature also has to go up so that is something which it uh, which is quite straightforward to understand what is not straightforward to understand is liquid because in liquid um, specific volume doesn't change which means so so which means that that work transfer yeah in case of gas was you can imagine that PV work, yeah, because if you are compressing the gas, yeah, you are doing work and and you can you can see the the chain the force times distance, yeah. But here you can't see it because the volume doesn't. So how is this work transfer leading to a change of? Can can someone try to explain that? In liquids. And if you can understand this, this will you will also know that this is actually another source of pressure. So far, for liquids, I have been telling you one thing that okay, if there is a pipe, yeah, and there is a liquid inside it, so the pressure of this liquid at some point must be related to some. This is what I have been telling you so far. So far, that there is some actually body of water stored and that height so that is that is how you you know pressure from your school and previous classes so that you can imagine some some weight of water pressing this water and that's why you have this pressure now for the first time we don't need that picture yeah we can have a pipe with water or any other liquid and not necessarily any tank yeah, so I'm just removing this and I can still generate pressure and that pressure you can see from the context comes from the pump so if I have a pump that pump can transfer work so that I can have it I mean to precise it can transfer energy as work and that work transfer leads to a change in pressure so you don't need the level anymore you can just have a pump so work is equally uh, useful for increasing pressure now how is that possible so if you want to understand that you have to see it uh, let me just explain it on a, on a different yeah here so the question now I'm trying to answer how does work transfer change pressure and temperature of a liquid? This is the question I'm trying to answer. So if you um, to understand that if this was if this were a solid if this were not liquid but just one object one solid object let's say just imagine a ball one single ball not many and you transfer work to it work transfer what will happen what will be the result of that a change in tell me If this is one rigid body work transfer will lead to a change in which energy kinetic energy yeah kinetic energy 
Okay. So now imagine I have a large collection of small objects. Huh? And now you transfer work. Work transfer. So what will happen there? It's not a single body. So the the motion, yeah. So you can you can think of uh, this messy microscopic motion. So this transfer will, this work transfer will lead to more agitation. And compared to this here, because workers work always involves some force in some direction. So here the change in kinetic energy will be only in one dimension. Yeah. So like the velocity will increase only in that one direction. It will not go sideways. But here, because you have a crowd of molecules, yeah, so and because random motion is always there, so that random motion will increase so that that agitation will be felt in every direction. So can you now understand that why the pressure increases and why the temperature increases? Pressure increases because the effect is in every direction. And you have to thank the large number of molecules being involved rather than just one single object. And of course, more agitation always means more tem larger temperature. That, that also means that we can think about this problem. And although it's an advanced topic, but you can imagine a situation where apparently there is you don't see any liquid there is no liquid yeah uh, i have just i have shared um a few days ago on facebook a news where some researchers trying to uh, lift sand up to some mountain yeah I don't know if you guys have seen that, but if you store sand and then if you drop that sand back and you have some kind of turbine there, yeah, so you can now imagine that a sand is being seen. Of course, nobody would say that sand, a sand is a liquid, yeah? but you can see sand as a large collection of particles. Can you? Yeah. And if you provide, so now you can see that when you are lifting it by using some motors, what will those motors do? They will provide work transfer. Yeah. So now you can imagine how that work transfer will increase the pressure, even though you have a large group of solid particles, but this effectively behaves like a, like a liquid. So it will increase the pressure uh, as well as the temperature. Yeah. So, so the key is not to have a single body, single large body, but to have a collection of large bodies. So that's how you can understand the, the effect of pumping and compression. Of course, here you cannot compress. Uh, a sand cannot be compressed. So you have to see, it, see this as a pumping problem. Okay. Yeah, was up Corey? Yeah, you a gypsy was a reader. Yeah. Okay. So throttling device. Have you seen? Have you heard this name throttle? Throttle before, or is it the first time? This is one way you can imagine this throttle device. But so far we have been pressing on something which is called quasi equilibrium. Can you remember that? Can you recall that? Sorry, 
इक्विलिब्रियम क्वाज इक्विलिब्रियम की क्या खास बात थी कि जो चेंजेस हैं जो चेंजेस हैं वो क्या होंगे दैट विल बी द चेंजेस विल बी स्मूथ एंड स्लो सो दैट एट एवरी पॉइंट ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसेस यू कैन अप्रोक्सीमेट द स्टेट ऑफ अ सिस्टम एज सम इक्विलिब्रियम स्टेट now this is the first example throttling where you do not have that picture um so if you have imagine if you have some fluid flowing in this direction and it suddenly faces a restriction this is a restriction it is a change of cross section so from this point to this point the change will be sudden it will not be uh, it will not be a gradual change. Yeah. so some serious drop in pressure can uh, result from this uh, restriction and a more mild example is that you have if you have a porous plug here same can so a lot of actually energy can be lost here uh, and here as well so that pressure drop that sudden pressure drop drop sudden pressure drop is what we mean as by throttling and this device is actually throttling device so and this can also happen in in reverse direction yeah so any change uh, but 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 in most application you will see a drop in pressure okay so uh, from from before i get to the equation what will you um, expect what application can you see a sudden pressure drop also mean sudden temperature drop if you are using a fluid a sudden drop in temperature uh, pressure will be accompanied by a sudden drop in temperature so which means that this uh, can be used in refrigeration do you remember do you recall uh, the refrigeration cycle where we have a substance that substance is used to cool something else yeah. and instead of this i mean in this in this region uh you can imagine a, a sudden exchange of energy so quick cooling uh, is possible with with, with throttling yeah. so <clears throat> now we come to the energetic balance if you look at this energetic balance the terms which have been underlined they can be ignored so there is no heat transfer primarily they, these these are models yeah so like just like i said nozzle is a model where so you are focusing on that property not on the actual structure that is the nozzle so here when we said when we see throttling and throttling by assumption this will be negligible yeah. insignificant heat transfer can work transfer um this is okay no change no change in level this will also be insignificant in most cases uh although that's not a requirement so in throttling uh you can expect these two as the only changes change in enthalpy and change in kinetic energy and if change in kinetic energy is also insignificant then you have this defining equation that okay the enthalpy will not change so now if you can recall the definition of enthalpy was u plus 
PV. So if you say U1, P1, V1 equals U2, P2, V2. So if there is no change in uh, energy and no change in specific volume, then you can expect, no, sorry, no, that's not what will happen. Let me write this down again. Uh, U plus PV equals U plus PV. So P1, P2, U1, U2. So if, now the pressure drop is a consequence of that sudden loss of energy. So I'm just trying to, to imagine where this energy goes. So if H2 is equal to H1, and if P2 is smaller here, no, P2 is larger, sorry. P2 is smaller. P2 is smaller. And P1 is larger. So what is being um, increased? If pressure is decreasing, what will increase? What do you think will be the case? specific internal energy and specific volume I think specific volume will change because this although he has not explained it but I have just uh, I can just recall something maybe you have also heard this name Joel Thompson's effect have you heard this name before Joel's effect where you have sudden expansion of gases. Can someone recall that? So if you allow a gas to expand suddenly, it will cause cooling. Yeah. So I think Because both pressure and specific energy is going to decrease, and that is only possible if the specific volume is increasing. Yeah. I'll check this again because it's, it's he, I think it's, it's written here, Joel Thompson expansion. Yeah. <clears throat> so as far as problem solving is concerned, you need to remember this equation. This one that a throttling device, because we want to, we don't want to get down to that uh, detailed physics. For us, the defining equation is that enthalpy is conserved um, and there will still be pressure drop. So I, I'm now leaving this uh, example uh, because this is an experiment uh, which is not very relevant to us. And the system integration is also something uh, which I'm skipping. I'll just give you one, one, one comment that we have in, the, in this course so far have been studying different, uh, you can say, components. So there is a component view and there is a system view. You, all, you already know that. I don't have to tell you in detail. 
and by components we mean okay so we have studied turbines we have studied pumps for example compressors nozzles diffusers and so on so each one of them can be seen as one um, system you can think of it as one system if you don't want to see them as components because maybe component is too simple what we mean by system integration system integration is that you have to combine these different systems so like you have a turbine as one system then you have a pump as another system and then you have a condenser yeah <clears throat> and a boiler so you can combine these four components in such a way that the exit of pump is connected with the inlet of a boiler then the exit of a boiler is connected with the inlet of a turbine and so on so this is kind of a series connection <coughs> and with this combination you achieve a much more uh, complex and more useful thing which you can call a power plant you see so that is what that is the meaning of system integration of course that is uh, more into mechanical engineering so we can also skip that and if you want to see this uh, in nature nature has been combining these different things so for example if you look at the tree there are many systems going on yeah so <clears throat> receiving solar energy and then there are there are some processes which are involved in pumping liquid from the soil and there are other processes like chemical processes yeah photosynthesis and other things and then there is evaporation yeah so if, if you look at this you can see them as many different systems connected with each other that's also one way of looking at it it's, it's an example of an integrated system I'm also skipping this example, yeah, evaluating performance. You can note this down. Because we must not remember, uh, forget that um, we, we have to cover second law of thermodynamics and I was just want to get to that chapter as soon as possible. So only minimum stuff will be covered. Transient analysis, uh, you don't need to look in this, uh, look, look in detail, the math, but just remember one thing that the energy balance, remember, was this QCV dot minus WCV dot uh, plus M dot. And probably there was summation over all the inlets and there was something and then over all the exits ME dot and there was something, yeah, this H, I, and so on. So in most examples, we say, to zero and that is what we mean in transient analysis you can't do that so you will simply um, write that down d over dt of the energy huh? <clears throat> and when you want to write this whole equation that's what you mean by transient analysis yeah So instead of leaving, okay, so I, I'm not covering all this math because this is only, he, he has just tried to integrate the equation. So the energy balance, which we studied so far, is actually the energy rate balance, not the energy balance. What we have been doing so far is called the energy rate balance because we have dots and derivatives. On the left-hand side, we have derivative. On the right-hand side, we have those dots. So if you integrate both sides, yeah, then on the left-hand side, instead of the d over dt, you get the change in energy. Yeah? This is change in energy. And on the right-hand side, instead of those dots, you have integrals. So I, I think you, you, you know enough uh, calculus to understand that. 
So in transient applications, I'm skipping this example. I will just deal with one example which you will need in the courses that are coming next. So I'm skipping this as well. I'm skipping this as well. Because these are all uh, applications to that are too technical for electrical engineers or at least in one course. If we had many courses, we could have done that. No, I think no, no, this, this is something which I need to cover. This one example is uh, important for you because you will see something like this in, uh, in a course uh, which will, I think maybe it's in the coming spring, it's called feedback control. You must have heard that course. So in feedback control systems, uh, you are dealing with transients. And this is this example is actually typical of such problems. So again, uh, I will ask you to read this in detail because this is very simple. We have seen so many examples where some data is given and you just translate this to a list of quantities. Yeah? What is important is, and, 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 and this must not be new for you, this type of example, because uh, the, uh, the ass assignment three in which I asked you to write, rework that example in consistent units. If you see that we also had a tank there, there was level and that level was changing with respect to time because there was flow here and flow there. Yeah. And the flow was not balanced. Yeah, if the flow is not balanced, the, the, the level will either go up or down. So there, it was also uh, a problem of transient. There was no steady state. This is a little bit complicated, but the main theme remains the same. So I just need to focus on this fact. So, and this figure is very important to uh, understand the role of this, this model. This is called steering. Can somebody tell me why we need this thing? Regardless of the rest of the details of this example. Hmm? Anyone? Usually we use this, we, we, we assume that, okay, there is some steering mechanism. So without this steering, what will happen? Hmm? Uh, the temperature won't be uh, constant throughout. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we want to simplify the analysis. And remember, simplified analysis means that you want to have um, ordinary differential equations, yeah, ODEs. An ordinary differential equation means that the quantities uh, are only changing with time. Uh, they are not changing with space. So definitely because of the difference in these two flow rates. No, I think the flow rates are the same here. Sorry, the flow rates are the same. Uh, you see, if you compare it with that example, in that example, there was a difference in flow rates. Flow rates at one point uh, was different from the flow rate at the other, and that led to a change in level, up or down. Here, <clears throat> the flow rates are the same. Yeah? So this is 270 and this is 270, which means that there is no change in level. And you can see that. Yeah? The, the volume is not changing. But there is something else which is going on. There is this cooling coil. Yeah. So this means that there is some cooling liquid which is circulating in this piping. And that's what you mean by this cooling coil. And what will this uh, lead to? It's a heat exchanger. It is a heat exchanger, but we, we want to analyze it, this heat exchanger um, and, and by studying its transients. There is no steady state. So this exchange with the... Uh, 
liquid here inside the tank will lead to a change of what? Change of temperature, right? And you only want to understand or analyze how that temperature inside the tank, that T, changes with time. You only want to know the variation in time. It will be much more complicated if there is variation in space. For example, if the temperature here, 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 definitely this temperature will be different because points that are close to this cooling will have lower temperature. Points that are away from this will have higher temperature. The steering will make sure that, okay, there is a uniform temperature. Yeah. It will not be exactly uniform, but at least you will have a simple model. That's one thing which you need to know. And the other is, <clears throat> if I now look at this, this is just the energy balance. When you write the energy balance, you ig ignore everything else. So, for example, uh, here, what can be ignored? You can ignore, this cannot be ignored. Yeah, because that's um, can you can you now see the boundary? If you look carefully, the boundary, this dashed line, this dashed line is uh, actually following this, yeah? which means that this cooling coil is part of the surrounding. Can you see that? Why is that important? Because if you make this cooling coil inside your boundary, if you define the boundary in a simple way, so that it's inside, then this term will go to what? This term will go to? Can you see that? And then you will not be able to analyze changes cooling So this equation ko use karne ka use we want to see that that cooling um, coil is part of the surrounding so that this term is not zero. Yeah? And mention for that, I need to actually read this question. And if you read this, this is the part. A cooling coil immersed in the water removes energy at a rate of 7.6 kilowatt. So that's straight out in a straight away manner that translates to this term. Will this be plus or minus? Tell me. Minus. Minus. Why? Uh, because energy heat tra is transferring out of out the of system. The system. Out of the system. Yeah. So that's that's the key. Okay. How about this term? So we can now ignore that. How about this term? Can you, if you look at this diagram, don't look at the text again. This diagram me kaha pe ye w dot is jaga pe relevant. Has it got anything to do with m1 dot or m2 dot? No, it doesn't. Yeah, because they have a question. If someone wants to confuse you, they can say that, okay, what is the expression for kinetic energy of mv squared? Yeah? So I can say half m1 v1 squared at the exit. And if I take the derivative, I can say that, okay, 
energy is um, transferred at the end. So if there is a transfer of energy, uh, you just saw that, okay, work transfer can give you an, an increase in kinetic energy. We just saw that, yeah? So a change of kinetic energy should also lead to work transfer. So what will be wrong in this reasoning? And I can say that, okay, this velocity is constant. So V1 squared will be out and then I'll have M dot. So that is, we have M dot. So what will be wrong with that reasoning? This would have been true if there was one single rigid body moving. And this is a flow. So you do not associate kinetic energy with a flow in that way. Three argument valid there. So now you still have kinetic energy, but that kinetic that kinetic energy is actually uh, uh, wait a minute. That kinetic energy uh, for example the change in kinetic energy this delta delta ke that will be when v1 and v2 are different yes when v1 and v2 are different then you have a change in kinetic energy but that change uh, is not occurring at the boundary this d by dt uh, doesn't apply at the boundary it's only because there is difference from inlet or so the energy balance of like the house map may not go like which terms and let kill out there or push term to skill out there exit here on the major difference here that leads to an overall change in energy. now that is not what what we mean by this d by dt so manage up to explain get a d by dt ka is for a context measure of matlab hai mass transfer o mass transfer you m dot hai sir of and because mass uh, mass transfer of energy sir here potential energy can you consider only inlet or outlet key there are different heights there are different heights uh, you mean Height one up with a concy hoogie. So, like inlet is higher than outlet, those may z delta z ni change yoga. Like delta z change yoga, take it. Like in all level, you have a safe and healthy. नहीं या वो वो जो आप जो जी जी टर्म कह रहे हैं ना वो यहाँ पे निगले वो यहाँ पे निगलेजिबल है क्योंकि आपने सिस्टम को कैसे डिफाइन किया हुआ है यू हैव डिफाइन्ड दिस सिस्टम इन सच अ वे द स्टेरिंग इज एक्चुअली द की स्टेरिंग अगर ना होती ना फिर आपका बात आपका पॉइंट बिल्कुल वैलिड था स्टेरिंग से हमने क्या अचीव किया है? We want to assign just one quantity the whole system. So just made differences in a temperature key. From the Vesi even out curve here. So here is the enthalpy H1. Here is the H1 here. And H2 here. Okay. Okay. So enthalpy may you have U plus PV. 
एंथाल्पी की डेफिनेशन में लेवल नहीं आ रहा ठीक है सो आई एम जस्ट इमेजिनिंग के जो टर्म्स uh, हैं वो वो कौन सा टर्म होगा जी जी वन और जी जी टू एंड दिस विल बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय एम वन डॉट एंड दिस विल बी मल्टीप्लाइड बाय एम टू डॉट so we have to see this height if this height is significant compared to yahan pe koi na koi cheez hentes ne diya hoga example mein plot the variation of water temperature with respect to time हाँ सो वी 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 डू नीड एजम्पन एजम्पन आपको बताए इन सारे एग्जाम्पल्स में एक किस जगह पे लिस्ट करता है इंजीनियरिंग मॉडल में एंड एंड द एबसेंस ऑफ एनी इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द हाइट दिया नहीं हुए उसने क्या एज्यूम किया हुआ यहाँ पे इससे पहले इससे पहले इसने क्या लिखा हुआ है ये आपको समझ नहीं आएगा इससे पहले क्या लोग हैं? The only significant heat transfer is with the cooling coil. ये uh, it's it's important to understand because you will have that term. Let's let's let me just add that term so that you know why we are ignoring it. Plus और यहाँ पे क्या होगा? M uh, dot जो कि दोनों फिर same है. That will be G Z one minus G Z two. Now, ignoring this term doesn't mean that this will be zero. Yeah, this will be small compared to the other terms. ये बात समझ आ रही है ये वाली बात compared to. जी सर. क्योंकि एक एग्जांपल में इसने टरबाइन वाली एग्जांपल में मैंने आपको न्यूमेरिकल वैल्यूज बताई थी ना कि उसमें वो वहां पे एक क्वांटिटी इतनी कम थी कंपेयर टू दर्ज मेरे ख्याल में वहां पे समथिंग वाज 1000 किलोवाट एंड कंपेयर टू दैट समथिंग एल्स वाज जस्ट 60 वॉट्स नाउ 60 वॉट्स इज स्मॉल कंपेयर टू 1000 किलोवाट यहां पे बट व्हेन यू वांट टू इस सेव से मुझे एक और बात याद आ गई when you want to um, neglect something so you make sure that you neglect uh, you neglect um, before before neg uh, neglecting something you compare equal quantities or quantities of equal units ye bahut zaruri hota hai mai mai iski ek example agle page pe dena chahta hu if you are not careful with that this is what what can happen to you so for example i can have this you will understand this much easier i have a simple circuit let's say mere paas yahan pe koi value mujhe bataye mere paas let's say 2 ohms hai aur yahan pe hai 0.01 let's say iska kya unit hota hai inductance ka henry hai so can i now say that okay this is 0.01 henry is small much small compared to 2 ohms so hen hence i can approximate this by a resistor circuit what will be wrong in this reasoning bataiye they are not the same uh, units they are different so how do we compare how what must we do so, so before we can make this compare? frequency domain mein compare so we can go to frequency domain if we are in ac yeah ac means that if we have a single frequency fir to bahut aasan hai fir to aap usko convert karenge kis mein reactance mein na no? 
एंड रेजिस्टेंस एंड रिएक्टेंस यहाँ तक चूली कंपेरेबल तो वहाँ तो आप कर सकते हैं बट वॉट इफ देर इज नो एस सी देर इज एक्चुअली देर इज जस्ट ट्रांसजेंट्स और यू कैन हैव डिफरेंट फ्रीक्वेंसीज फिर आप वो भी नहीं कर सकते मतलब स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स है आप फिर स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स देखना चाहते हैं और उसमें ट्रांसजेंट्स भी हैं तो उसमें तो कोई ऐसी नहीं है ना मतलब देर अब उसका अगर आप बॉडी प्लॉट देखेंगे सो यू विल हैव ऑल फ्रीक्वेंसीज फिर आप क्या करेंगे फिर उसका हल ये है कि यू गेट बैक टू थर्मोडाइनमिक्स यू हैव टू सी दिस फ्रॉम ए थर्मोडाइनमिक परस्पेक्टिव on thermodynamics may there is only one quantity which can be attached to both these components and that must that can be compared what quantity kya hai i must associate something with this associate something with this and that will be comparable aur wo kya hoga hai is course mein yahi seekha hai aap logo ne that will be either energy or power theek hai energy dot so let's use energy or energy dot to yahan pe energy uh, yahan pe per unit time yahan pe kya ho jayega iska r आई स्क्वा और इसका क्या होगा जिससे सेम करंट इसका क्या होगा एंड देन यू हैव टू कंपेयर दिस टू सो यहां पे कह सकते हैं कि इसका इन दोनों का जो If you want to ignore this, तो इसका जो maximum magnitude है ना that must be smaller than the minimum magnitude here. फिर आप इसको ignore कर सकते Minimum या average. You will see this in 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 feedback control. वहाँ पे जब आप when you ignore something, you you have to make sure that the power or energy is negligible. So now you can understand this again. If you look at this example again. we are ignoring that change in gravitational potential energy only because that is energy and that is that is small compared to yahan pe jo ke dots hain the there are dots because you are multiplying it with m dot so that will be the rate of yeah uh, the rate of change of that energy uh, and it's much small compared to the to q dot अच्छा अब W डॉट आपने मुझे ये नहीं बताया कि W डॉट इधर इस एग्जाम्पल में था हम्म नजर आ रहा है लेकिन आप लोग पता नहीं क्यों नहीं बता रहे जो स्टेरिंग हो रही है स्टेरिंग हो रही है तो दैट स्टेरिंग इस ट्रां एक्चुअली इट्स ट्रांसफरिंग एनर्जी टू इट स्कैनेटिक एनर्जी ठीक है और यहाँ पे इसने इस इसकी वैल्यू भी दी हुई है ये इसकी वैल्यू है 0.6 किलोवाट नाउ दिस 0.6 किलोवाट इज स्मॉल कंपेयर टू 7.4 सो so आप चाहें तो आप उसको भी इग्नोर कर सकते हैं लेकिन ठीक है नाउ वंस यू डू दैट देयर इज अब इसमें जो क्वेश्चन है वो टेंपरेचर का है हाउ इज टेंपरेचर सो द इक्वेशन यू गॉट फ्रॉम द एनर्जी बैलेंस उसमें जो डेरिवेटिव है वो u का है ना यू मस्ट रिलेट दिस u cv टू टेम्परेचर अगर आपने t डॉट करना है बेसिकली हमारी इक्वेशन में t डॉट होना चाहिए सो so, u और t के दरमियान रिलेशनशिप आपको पता है कि वो यू कैन यूज दैट सिंपल चेन रूल हमें पता है कि एनर्जी इज मास टाइम स्पेसिफिक एनर्जी एंड इफ मास इज कॉन्स्टेंट या क्योंकि मास ट्रांसफर यहाँ पे दोनों पॉइंट पे सेम है सो इट इट कैन बी टेकन आउट फ्रॉम दी डिफरेंशिएटर एंड स्कोरी यू हैव डी यू ओवर डी टी एंड देट डी यू ओवर डी टी वी ऑल्सो नो दैट दी वाटर इज इनकम्प्रेसिबल एंड 
under the assumption of incompressible, we know that this uh, internal energy will only depend on time or temperature. It will not depend on pressure because of the incompressibility. So you can apply the chain rule, chain rule, derivative with respect to time is derivative with respect to temperature and derivative of temperature with respect to time. So you will see that T dot in it and derivative of specific internal energy with respect to time, with respect to temperature is exactly what we mean by specific C. So that's how you translate the derivative of internal energy to a derivative of temperature with some constant and that will lead to a differential equation in temperature. So basically, our goal was we translated that rate, energy rate balance into a differential equation, ordinary differential equation, thanks to stirring. And after that, you have some initial condition. If you solve that, so you solve that and that will lead to this plot. So initial temperature. Cooling so ultimately it will drop to smaller value. This drop is a result of cooling. Do you have any questions in this in this? I, I think we are done with this chapter now. This this was the last example. And this was the only example of transients because I did not cover the other examples. Achha, why why is this example uh, important for feedback control? Uh, although you have not studied that course, but you have seen many applications of this. Uh, can you give me example where this, where, I mean, you can imagine an example, an application where this uh, variation of temperature with time and the derivative is important. Hmm? Control system laga hota hai na government. So uska hum kya kehte hain? Naam bhi aapne suna hoga. You must have heard this name, temperature control or temperature regulation. So, jo, jo aap, um, AC ka, ya heaters, coolers, in sab ka jo aap temperature control karte hain, us ka ek naam bhi hota hai. Thermo? Aapne naam suna hoga usko, thermo? Thermostat. Thik hai na? Through a thermostat, you specify the temperature you want. And then there is some internal um, control system which has to to make sure that the temperature is. So you, if you see this, you can see this as a as an example of change in temperature. Yeah. You have a given temperature of a system. You are not happy with that. You specify a new temperature through some remote control or anything. So you are actually specifying a step change that I want this system to have a new temperature, which is 296. So the system has to respond in that way. So instead of starting the new chapter, uh, I just copied most of these equations yeah, in session two exam. And uh, maybe we can go to Exercises. Mm. Wait. Exercises. May I go to Sorry. Chapter four. And I will go. Now, in this, figures. See, what you have got to do. Okay. For example, what do you see in this picture? Now, this is much more complicated. You, you should not expect any question like that because you have two, basically two different phases in one system. So, of course, this is possible uh, to solve because you, this only means that you have to use methods from this chapter 
from chapter 4 and you have to combine this with chapter 3 because the different phases are on to deal karne ke liye chapter 3 mein aapne cheeze padhi hain uh, of course this can be an assignment problem but not an exam problem jisme pura time hi aapke paas ek ghanta hota hai ab ye aapke khayal mein kya hai this also looks like a heat exchanger yeah a duct and an air handling unit now this is very simple yeah the cross section doesn't change yeah and the pressure at the inlet is larger than the pressure at the exit aur yahan pe values diye hui hain yahan pe nahi diye hui hai so you if you assume air to be ideal gas for example you can use the ideal gas equation yeah, p1 v1 over t1 equals p2 v2 over t2 and so on so all those and maybe depending on the question ki question kaun sa hai question uh, 4.15 for example isko agar main read karu to kya hai um this figure provides steady state data flowing through rectangular duct assuming ideal gas behavior so it will, it will either be given or you have to assume yourself for example agar ye is ye nahi diya hua question mein agar ye diya hai fir to aapko kuch karne ki zarurat nahi hai agar question mein nahi diya and you assume this so can someone tell me uh, how would you uh, check your assumption ke okay, whether my assumption is appropriate or not kaise check karenge usko आपको बताया गया बताएं बहुत सिंपल होना चाहिए इसका जवाब शाबाश वॉल्यूमेट्रिक फ्लोरेट क्या होता है उसका एक्सप्रेशन क्या होगा एक उसका डेफिनेशन है डेफिनेशन उसका ये है वॉल्यूम वॉल्यूम के लिए चूंकि हम सिंबल यूज नहीं करते वी हैव सिंबल वी फॉर वेलोसिटी या सो वेलोसिटी को अगर मैं एरिया से मल्टीप्लाई कर दू वट डू आई गेट बताए दैट्स एग्जैक्टली वट 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 वी गेट क्योंकि अगर ये वेलोसिटी को एरिया चूंकि कॉन्स्टेंट है जब वी वेलोसिटी is the differentiated version of length yeah if you remember so many an a times l we know is volume so ye d over dt and that is exactly what i what gives me ab acha now is me dekho na ab kiya a diya hua hai rectangle hai so this times this is the area v diya hua hai so it's a v1 and that's get that's that's the answer to that part an inlet mass flow rate now how do we get that ye bataye specific volume nikal lo but tables se kam ki or ideal gas se no but wo nikalna baad mein hai let's say aapke paas wo hai to wo is formula mein kya change karu taki mujhe mass flow rate mil jaye divided by yeah, specific divided volume that. so you divide that by specific volume <coughs> and i will get mass flow rate m dot m1 dot now that small v i can get from the table ab kaun sa table pehli baat to hai ki mujhe air ka table dekhna padega lekin do i need to look at the table just give me no we have ideal gas ideal gas behavior hai 
और आइडियल में आपको पता है कि P1 वन टाइम्स वी वन डिवाइडेड सॉरी दैट मस्ट इक्वल R टाइम्स T1 वन सो ऑल आई नीड टू गेट इज R सो R मस्ट कम फ्रॉम द टेबल अब इसमें क्वेश्चन ये है कि टिपिकली टेबल में आप जाएंगे आपको R नहीं मिलने वाले अभी से मैं बता दू ठीक है तो जो चीट शीट आपको एग्जाम में दी है वहां पे क्या दिया हुआ है चीट शीट में जारी बात है मैं किस किस गैस की वैल्यू दू ना या तो टेबल है मेरे पास इसमें हर गैस का जो है ना वो एक गैस वन है एक गैस टू है और उसका आर दिया हो इस तरह अगर टेबल नहीं है तो आपके पास कौन सी वैल्यू चीट शीट में मैं दे सकता हूँ इमेजिन करें आई कैन नॉट बी एक्सपेक्टेड टू गिव यू दैल्यू ऑफ आर So I'll give you the value of R bar, and that R bar, उसके क्या नाम है? कौन सा कांस्टेंट है वो? उसका नाम है universal gas constant. That value is given. Now all you need to do is to calculate this R from that R bar. दोनों में क्या रिलेशनशिप है मोलर मास एम से मल्टीप्लाई मल्टीप्लाई करो डिवाइड करो देखो ना ये चीज ऑल दो मैंने टेबल दिया हुआ है बट लेट लेट मी जस्ट शो यू हाउ यू फिगर दीज थिंग्स आउट सो मेरे पास क्वेश्चन ये है कि व्हाट इज द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन आर एंड आर बार आई डोंट नो बट वन थिंग इज क्लियर लेट्स वर्क बैकवर्ड वन थिंग इज क्लियर दैट पी स्मॉल वी इज आर टी आई नो दैट और इसका जो बार वाला वर्जन है वो कौन सा होगा किस किस चीज में बार आना चाहिए स्पेसिफिक वॉल्यूम पे भी आए और इस पे भी आएगा P और T पे क्यों नहीं आता कि वो तो स्पेसिफिक प्रॉपर्टीज है ना दे आर नॉट बेस्ड ऑन एनी मास और वॉल्यूम ओके सो लेट्स डिवाइड द फर्स्ट बाय द सेकंड या तो क्या हो जाएगा V और V बार मस्ट इक्वल R ओवर R बार नाउ V का क्या डेफिनेशन है वॉल्यूम डिवाइडेड बाय मास या क्या डेफिनेशन है एक्चुअल डिवाइड वी ओवर वी बार सो दिस शुड गिव मी एन ओवर एम ठीक है अग्रीड एंड वॉट इज मलिकुलर वेट एम ओवर M over n. ठीक है ना मलिकुलर वेट होता ही क्या है मास ऑफ ए द एवरेज मास ऑफ ए सिंगल यूनिट या तो यहां पर वो सिंगल नहीं है वो किलो है लेकिन आप इसके यूनिट में वो लिख देंगे तभी तो मलिकुलर मास का यूनिट क्या होता है किलोग्राम पर क्या होता है उसका किलोग्राम पर किलो मोल होता है विच मीन दैट यू कैन डिवाइड एम बाय एन टू गेट एम सो अब इसका क्या मतलब क्या मतलब होगा कि दिस दिस मस्ट इक्वल वन ओवर एम दैट्स योर रिलेशनशिप समथिंग एक्जेक्टली लाइक दैट इज इज गिवन इन द किट
So the, the tip I can give you for session two is that it will not be possible for you to solve all these uh, questions. And even if you find the solution, you will solve many questions. But, um, you know, because I I have not solved many questions, so, so the, the paper I have uh, actually set up for you is more uh, it's more conceptual and uh, m you can expect many short questions yeah short questions one line answer or mcqs yeah. so yeah mcqs honge kuch kuch short one one line answers honge problems hai lekin wo problems they are much much simpler compared to the mcqs and the short line you short line uh, Short questions may or MCQs may you have to think a lot. So ab ye na na dekhe ki aksar students ulta karte hain na wo wo problem dekhte hain ki uspe zada time lagate hain. Wo mera wo simple diye hain. Or MCQs ko tick cross tick cross karke bagair soche samjhe. So usme ab pata hai you must remember ki eight MCQ has four marks. So agar apne mindlessly unko attempt kiya to apke bahut zada marks zaya ho sakte hain. So I would encourage you to spend time on the questions other than the numerical because they carry more weight in, in the overall exam so are there any questions it's not even in exercise uh, this my short questions is not with you you can actually Think about those short questions to get a feel of what you can expect. So if there is if there is no question, we can stop here. It's, the time is 3:25, and wish you good luck for the for session two. And ye ap note karein ki jo hamne chunki ek hafte mein plan kiya hua session two ko sirf aur sirf jo hai na ek crowding se bachne ke liye. To ye na ho ki ap exam ke baad jo hai na yahan pe wo crowding aur yahan pe wo halla gulla ho. सीधा बस एग्जाम रूम से निकल के आप सीधा घर जाएं ठीक है कोई कोई यहाँ पे मिलने जुलने की जरूरत नहीं है लोगों से वी विल आल्सो ट्राई टू इंश्योर दैट बट इफ इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल फ्रॉम आवर साइड यू यू बेटर रिमेंबर दैट योरसेल्फ ठीक है फिर थैंक यू अल्लाह हाफिज